Hello, everybody, and you're very welcome back again to another podcast episode. Today, I have my dear friend, Kirsty Chapman. And Tur- Kirsty is all the way from Australia. And Kirsty is a certified natural healing coach. Kirsty, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Right, it's so great to have you. I've, I've been talking to you in the past a, a couple of times and uh, really anxious to have you on the podcast because, Kirsty, you have a wealth of information. I mean, when we were chatting before, we could have just gone on and on. We were talking for a long time. So in this episode, guys, we're going to be talking about natural healing. We're going to be talking about nutrition and water. We're going to be talking about a lot of things about how you can improve your life and the so simple things that you can do to really have a massive effect on your health and your well-being. And Kirsty is going to help us with all that. So Kirsty, before we get into it, can you tell us a little bit about why, why you chose this path, why you're actually doing this work? What is it that you really care about? It's um, Yeah, it's quite interesting how it all came about. It wasn't quite planned, but I was employed by Queensland Health and I was a coordinator for a number of years of an alcohol, tobacco and other drug service. And later on, I moved over to working with people with disabilities in the disability sector. I worked closely with mental health and it just and we provide a continuum of care services ranging from health promotion, wellness, right through to clinical services um, and counselling and, and, and community education. Now, I was always fascinated um, at the treatment with the health sector. There seemed to be a pill for every ill. Mm. And um, a lot of people who had living problems and also a lot of the people who became very dependent on prescription drugs were then referred to us so that we could help them to get off the antidepressants and opioid painkillers and and people who were suffering severe dependence-related problems, you know. We provided support and counselling for them. And I used to often say to some of the practitioners, when do we actually look at healing? When will these people get well? I know that we're providing treatment. I understand that aspect. But when will we start finally looking at curing and and healing? And um, I guess for me, the answers weren't very satisfactory. And that took me on a long journey of decades of study, trying to find out what are the answers and how do people heal naturally? Yeah, yeah. And I can hear, Kirsty, what you're saying there, because their mental health and depression, anxiety, they're it's massive actually and and even I think it's just growing actually in the last number of years it's growing 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 and you'll see there's a lots of treatments out there but you know what medications and what have you but nobody seems to be looking at um preventative or what caused it or you know where where's the root of it and as you say there's a pill for every ill I love that there's a pill for every ill and um yeah, what I hear there, um, Kirsty, is when we get on these pills and an awful lot of people have the mindset, oh, I'm going to be on this for the rest of my life. And they're resigned to that. And that is really dangerous because it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, I've heard so many stories of people who were on tablets and told they'd be on them for life and true nutrition exercise, really looking after themselves, uh, their, their mindset as well. An awful lot of to do with our thoughts, how we think and how we perceive things. Um really had an impact on people and helping them overcome this resignation that are going to be on tablets because tablets do have I suppose there's a place for them but short term it doesn't have to be long term and for the rest of your life and Christy I love I love when you started asking that question there has to be a natural way of healing so tell us a little bit more about um where where did you go from uh from working in in the what was it, Queensland University is that what you said where it was Queensland Health, the Department of uh, Health in Queensland. I was employed um, and with disability services. I think I spent nearly 25 years there. Wow. And um, and one of my big concerns was the side effects. You know, it's right what you just said, that there is a role that medication does play. I acknowledge that. But I was also concerned about the unwanted side effects. And um, and when I saw that sometimes people were prescribed new medication for these side effects, that really concerned me. And I kept, yeah, thinking about what can we do to help people uh, heal naturally, to begin that journey? What, what can be done? What needs to be added to their diet? What needs to be removed? 
what needs to be done. I wanted answers to those questions. Brilliant, brilliant. And Kirsty, how when you talk about diet and stuff, how is what people are eating, the foods that we're eating, are we eating the right foods? What's going on there in the in the whole nutrition side of things that's having an impact on our healing as well? Oh goodness. <laughs> that's just how long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Pandora's box. <laughs> years ago, many, many centuries, decades, centuries ago, Hippocrates said, thousands of years ago, let food be thy medicine. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, today in 2020, there's problems with that statement. Our farming practices. You know, and the way that um, chemicals are added and sprayed onto the fruit and veggies quite often, like the farmer doesn't spray the crops every time it ra uh, rains, they um, add a waxy type substance to it that keeps the, um, the sprays onto the fruit and veggies. Mm. And um, it's the way that they harvest that It's everything that's done um, uh, to the produce. That's that's a major, major concern, you know, the chemicals that are on the produce and there's also the handling of the produce and so forth. And mm. and, um, and and I recently, oh, it was about a year ago, I was in a shop quite close to here and I was just absolutely horrified. Um, this was a fruit and veggie store and um, a gentleman was working there and there was all those little insects that hang around the, the uh, lights yeah. And he had a spray, <gasps> insect spray, and he was spraying those um, insects above the vegetables. And I looked at him and I said, are you serious? My are God. you really serious? You know, so it's the handling of our produce too. There's a lot and of also, ignorance. There really is a lot of ignorance, isn't there? There is, there is. But there's, there's the, the chemicals, the steady drip, drip of poisons that we're getting into our system yeah. from the produce because I use a particular type of water to remove the chemicals off my fresh, fresh produce. And like today, I had a lady here watching me do the demonstration and I had some trussed tomatoes and punnet tomatoes and the water went yellow. So actually what washed yeah. off that substance, so it was to do with the pH yes, so balance of the water. Move. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, because yeah, regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I've seen that as well because for many of us, we wash our vegetables with the tap water. I'm sure I don't think that's really doing much at all. Well, it is. It's doing quite a bit, especially if you've got chlorine in your water. Oh, of course, yeah. Because the chlorine actually goes into your vegetables. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're putting another layer of toxicity into your food. And then also um, processed foods. There's an issue there. We need to have a look at the labels and learn to read labels and look at all the numbers that are in the labels to see what does that consist of. And also to know where some of the fresh produce is coming from or some of the fresh meats and that, what country they're coming from. What are their farming practices and what do they allow to be yeah. used in their country mm. that is that healthy for us? Um, also, think, another thing, sorry? I was just going to say, I think as well, another <clears throat> big factor in all this, Kirsty, is um, the, with the soil. And the soils are, yes. the lands have been really over harvested. And for many of yes. us, we're deficient in minerals. And minerals, we have, we, we require uh, some essential minerals, and magnesium is, is one. And the soils are very depleted because they've been over harvested and they've been continuously sprayed with these pesticides, as you say, as well. So that would be another factor. That's, a, that's exactly right. And, and some of the water, like all water quality, is not equal the way that it's created. Mm. And you look at distilled water and reverse osmosis water. And originally that was not made for human consumption. Right. And it actually strips the minerals out yes. of the water, the distilled water, which is definitely not very good for your body. I, there is um, minerals that you can add to your water, but a lot of people aren't aware about that. They assume that all water is created equal. And even the bottled water being in the plastic, and it's the most unregulated industry out. Yeah. And quite often the bottles sit at the airport somewhere in the sun and it leach the plastic leaks toxicity into it. Yeah. 
there, there is good quality water, and we can talk about that later, but water quality and quantity is such an important issue when it comes to our health. Yeah. yeah. We, I, we actually, Joanne, we, our body is made up of those 75% water. And if you can just use the analogy for one minute, that if you think of fish in a fish tank, because that's what we are, we're like a big fish in our water tank. And if you give fish the wrong type of water, how long does it take the fish to die? Yeah, yeah, incredible. That's the same as us. If we're putting toxicity into our body like that, uh, we're poisoning ourselves bit by bit. And, and a good example is uh, sodas and soft drinks. As some of the acidic drinks we often do when we do demonstrations, we look at, we test the pH of the water to see whether it's alkaline or whether it's acid. And some of the, some of the drinks, are, I call them death in a bottle. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Because they are so acidic. They're not good for our health. Yeah. So we can make a huge difference to our health by knowing what to do. And another good example is that if we're prescribed antibiotics, which sometimes we may need to have them, yeah. um, a good example is to add fermented foods and probiotic drinks at the same time to increase your consumption of that. I often run workshops and show people how to make sauerkraut and kimchi and how to use oh. probiotics and prebiotics and how to make water kefir and um, uh, milk kefir yeah. and curds and whey and things like that to give that balance to the... Um, yeah, because that's bring really that important for the microbiome, isn't it? The microbiome is exactly. a vital part of our health. I talk a lot about the microbiome in relation to sleep because the microbiome does so many different processes in the body. And one of them is um, serotonin, which is our feel good. Um, and, and that's made in ample amounts in our gut, the serotonin. And of course we need serotonin to make our melatonin, which is our sleep hormone. So we, most of us know serotonin as the happy hormone or neurotransmitter and it's vital. It's absolutely vital for health, but, but the microbiome does so much more. The microbiome actually helps us, us absorb our foods and it actually makes vitamins as well. So the microbiome is massive. And Kirsty, you were talking about um, the pH balance and the acid and alkaline. Can you tell people why an acid environment or like what an acid environment in your body does? What's going on when we have a very acidic environment? Because many people might not know actually what happens in the body. What's, what's happening when we have that acidic environment? It, um, it attracts more illness and more disease. Um, whereas the alkaline environment, um, it's just much better for your health. And we look at alkaline and we look at alkalized, and they're two different things. Alkaline is usually you buy water from the shop, which is alkaline, which is added chemicals to the water, mm -hmm. which is, again, using chemicals like our tap water. Quite often the tap water, can um, the pH tests can come up quite neutral, quite alkaline, but it's got added chemicals in the tap water. Plus you've got all the toxicity from all the old pipes where the water's coming through all the old pipes and um, there could be prescription drugs. There could be lots of things oh, in that God. tap water, in the town water, whereas if it's alkalised, it's a natural process, process that it goes through and the appliances like we use, they have eight titanium, medical grade titanium plates, yeah. which micro clusters the water, it oxidises it, it micro clusters it and um, it's yeah, just so much healthier for your body. It actually adds like a hydrogen, a natural hydrogen in it to the natural state the water is before we wreck it, before we ruin it. Now, I heard of that before with the hydrogen, and I know for many of us, we drink, well, most of us don't drink enough water, and most of us are actually going around dehydrated, which is having an impact on our metabolic process, all the breaking down of food and all the different making hormones, making enzymes, all the stuff that has been going on in the body, and water is a vital component of all of that. Now, hydrogen, you mentioned, so many of us will drink bottled water or whatever, we're not drinking clean water, but the water will sit on our stomach as well. So yes. um, it's not been absorbed properly. It's not been the That's cells right. are actually right down to the cellular level. What's hydrogen got to do with that? Tell us, tell us what the hydrogen is doing. The water works on a cellular level. It gives the body the tools to repair 
your body on the cellular level because your body has become oxidized, yeah. dehydrated, and inflama inflammation sets in. And uh, the water that we use and, and um, um, it, the, the water, oh, goodness, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Wait a minute, let me get my thoughts back together. The hydrogen um, has, helps absorb the water. It does, it does, it does. It puts the electricity basically back into the water, yeah. which is very healthy for your body. And, um, and it works on a, on a cellular level. Because we are and electrical beings, aren't your we? body becomes absorbs the water much better and it's interesting when you like a lady that was here today and I was doing a demonstration I had tap water and she bought some water from her place that had chlorine in it yeah and then I had my tap water out of the tank and then I had the water out of the appliance and we put three bowls out for her big Labrador that was outside the Labrador sniffed at all the different bowls and went for the want water that was the healthiest out of them. No even our pets way. know. Oh. Even our pets know. They know more than us. Yeah. They know what's healthy for them. It that was just she just could not believe it. She was so fascinated. That is, and that is absolutely incredible. So it's helping our pets as well because obviously they drink a lot of water. Well, exactly. I have a, um, just down the road from where I live in Dune and outside of Noosa, we have a holistic vet, a Jap Japanese holistic vet, and she uses this water in her practice. And, um, and Dr. Um, Tim Crow, he actually uses and recommends the water. You can Google him yeah. on uh, YouTube. And um, he Crow, talks about C -O -W -E, this. C-R-O-W-E, is it? Tim yes. Crow? Yes, yes. I can send you the links later on. You yeah, I'll put them in the, in the show notes. Yes, and he, um, he uses this water in his practice with, um, with pets. Wow, yeah. that is absolutely incredible. So, Kirsty, so we spoke about uh, nutrition and the, the, um, the minerals. We need minerals in our body. And, and I was looking at a video earlier on on brain health and um, – like our brains hold 80% water in our brains and we're talking about 75% of water in the body in total, but, but 80% in the brain, that's massive. So even if we are, what was that? I think it was 5% dehydrated, which most of, most of us are even one to two, most of us are dehydrated. But if we're up to 5% yes. dehydrated, obviously you're going to get that brain fog and all the rest. But I heard, and it was Dr. Corey Allen, is that her name? Water on the brain? Yes. That video, yes. yes. She said that a 5% reduction uh, of water in the brain will cause up to 20% of energy loss in the body. That is massive. It's like, massive, no wonder, exactly. No wonder we're we going around tired. <laughs> yes, exactly. But even, uh, and then she was going on to talk about children, young children. I know you're passionate about children as well. Young children with all these um you know, the, these chronic health conditions from a young age, like ADHD and, and all these, and, and even uh, as we get older, Alzheimer's, all these uh, chronic diseases are on the increase. The numbers are just increasing. And an awful lot of it, uh, Kirsty, as you say, can be down to really looking after ourselves and being hydrated, eating the right foods, reading the food labels, as you say, as well, and watching what's in the food. So many of us are eating high processed fatty foods and uh, just processed foods, salty foods. And um, we mentioned salt, um, and I know with the processed foods, it's the wrong type of salt, but our body does need a certain amount of salt, but that's the good, good salt. And for many people, and you were saying uh, with the reverse osmosis, that it strips out all the minerals. Now, I heard that if we put a pinch of Himalayan salts, which is a good salt and it has all the minerals that will add the minerals back into water. Would you agree with that? Is that something you'd recommend? Yes, I do. I do. I agree with that. But another factor that I just wanted to point out also, and, and that's a really important factor, what you pointed out there. Um, I don't want to discount, but that's really important. But another factor that's also very important is to look at the chemical exposure from the cleaning products and personal care products. Yeah. When you add the steady drip, drip, drip of poisons into our body, it's very easy to understand why things are on the increase, yeah. why disease, illness and everything is on the increase. It's so important today 
to look at all of those factors. Our, our body is like a little jigsaw puzzle. And it used to concern me a lot when I saw people running fermented food classes and, and people often attended those workshops, paid mm. good money, and then they assume that they know what to do. But mm. see, it, too much of anything can be harmful and it's about the balance. It's about the right water quality, the right water quantity. It's about removing the chemicals out of your food, out of your um, personal care or minimising the your environment of really isn't it your, your whole environment so as you say like even the air it, it, it is and it's it's not about being 100 percent perfect and wondering oh goodness i can't do this it's a journey it's not a destination Brilliant. it's a process that you start little by little Brilliant. and the people that i work with you know i just show them little things each time that we meet and mm. we might remove something out of the diet we might add something into the diet we might do little things like um, somebody might have a skin condition. Um, we might remove uh, dairy or wheat or uh, because they might have gluten sensitivity. Yeah. And I say to people, you know, remove it for so many weeks and if things start to shift, then add it back in six weeks later and see what happens. See if you get a reaction. Let yeah. your body talk to you and, and, and be your own doctor in a way, I guess, like, um, a healthy mindset, like increase the laughter in your life and look at the relationships that you engage in. I know that like we offer a special program, a mindset program that's free that anyone can register into and it teaches people. And, and the program's been put together by a lot of the experts like Napoleon Hill and Dr Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and they've all contributed to it. And there's a program people can register into that um, they learn about visualisation, affirmations, about um, a study uh, exercise, just to set a new routine, a new program to yeah. re relearn how to live and what to focus on. We often tend to focus on negativity, what's happened in our past yeah. and frightened of the future, and we're forgetting to live in our present moment. So the mindset work is absolutely critical and, and as well as the water as well, using drinking the right water as well as decreasing all that chemical exposure. Yeah. It's actually yeah. quite simple but yet quite complex. And so, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's simple but not easy. It's not what they say. It's simple but it's not easy. And I love what you're saying about the, um, the chemicals and the toxins and, and I believe we can't avoid them totally but we can do a lot to decrease as you say the cream the hand creams that we use in our personal care products there's toxins in those hand creams um, and and what we put on our skin are we absorb 60 percent of what we actually put on our skin so that's actually going into your like into your body and then the personal care the cleaning products in the house the air that we're breathing and even if we're spending a lot of time indoors which a lot of people are now and kids are on their computer games a lot more they're not out in the street playing like they used to and the indoor air quality is is really poor actually a lot of people don't realize how bad the indoor because you're just stuff seeping from your furniture and flame retardant stuff and all this you know and um yeah and at the cumulative effect as you say so we can do a lot to decrease all of that and even our thoughts and you went on to speak about mindset and living in the present moment and um, because we can have toxic thoughts and who speaks about it? dr joe dispenza uh, speaks an awful lot about you know, your thoughts and, you know, what you um, are thinking about causes a physiological effect on the body. Oh, yes. awesome. For sure. Like For sure. Massive. Um, what's that program that you were talking about, Chris, Kirsty? Is that your own program or, well, obviously it's, it's with all the other guys in it, so it's something that's just available on the internet. It's, um, it's our mastermind groups and it's a 90-day accountability program, which we're reducing down to 30 days. Right. And uh, people can join. Um, Give me the links for that and I'll put them in the show notes because it sounds really, really, really good. Yeah, I'll put the, definitely put that in the show notes. So it's all about living in the, in the, in the present moment, as you say, because Kirsty, you're so right. There are so many people that, you know, um, when, when I talk about depression and anxiety, depression is very much linked to the past, in my opinion, because we have a feeling of doom and gloom and I'll never be that and I'll, that will never happen for me. And then anxiety is like worrying about the future. So we're very attached to the past 
and we're also very attached to the future. And when we understand and we understand where that attachment is coming from and by letting go of all those attachments, and I know this is simple, but not easy. When we can come to live in the present moment and just be with what is, it just it just makes us so much more powerful. And we are just giving our power away on so many different levels. And when we call that power back in, living in the present moment and with the right mindset, that's going to have a massive effect on how you're feeling, your outlook in life. Um, and, and, and increasing the laughter is a very big factor in that as well. Having a bit of fun, which a lot of people are not doing because we're taking life way too seriously. So having fun and laughing is is a great antidote as well. It is, it is. And, and another one is to having what they call a sun bath, using the sun, sitting in the sun. I've got some books here on from the 1800s, late 1800s on natural healing. Wow. And, um, and it's so funny because they recommend the sun bath, what? which means sitting in the sun. And even way back then, they were recommending that we spend time in the sun, just sitting quietly, yeah. and absorbing the rays of the sun because it gives you the vitamin D, which increases your, it in, decreases infections and increases, it builds up your immune system. Yeah, absolutely. It is so important. And some parts of the world, they have a lot less sun, but we're so fortunate in Australia mm. um, that we have access to plenty of sun here. Sunshine and, is um, it really is. And really I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, putting on, and it drives me mad, um, the minute we get sun here in Ireland, so I'm living in Ireland and we don't get a lot of, a lot of sun and um, we get a lot of cloudy days and rain, which is good. We get we have green grass. <laughs> well, the minute the sun comes out or we're having a heat wave, everyone is throwing on the sun creams and they're toxic. They're really, yes, really toxic. No. And the kids and, and what's and you're you're blocking the sun and we need that for our vitamin D, as you say, absolutely vital for our immune system and our health and well-being. And we're blocking that when we're putting that onto our kids. So allow your kids to have some sunshine before. Obviously, the strength of the sun or how long they're out in the sun, if they're in direct sunlight, all them are factors to take into account. But don't go putting cream on your kids the minute they go outside the door that you're blocking the sun straight away. So we do need to allow. And sunshine is really fantastic for um, keeping your circadian rhythm in sync as well. Something that I talk a lot about in relation to sleep. Um, I tell people to go out and get sunshine first thing in the morning because it switches off the melatonin and allows, because we're naturally high in cortisol first thing in the morning. And when we get sunshine first thing in the morning, it allows for that cycle to, allows for that natural cycle. We're switching off the melatonin. So sunshine is so important on many, many different levels. It really is. It's, it's, it's a really it good is, It is. It is. The, the other thing that you touched on there that gets me quite um, passionate that I want to talk about it is the yes. chemicals that we're putting on our body. You know, like now with the what's happening globally, people are, uh, every shop that you go into here, we're expected to put hand sanitizer on and there's no question about what is in that hand sanitizer. Um, what are the chemicals that are in it? What are we plastering on our body? I know there was a program the other day about a sunscreen that's available in the shops here that people get horrific burns from. And it's supposed to be some kind of sunscreen that you use for your body. But what I was going to say about that chemical st um, uh, hand sanitizer is that that particular appliance that I referred to earlier, it provides five different types of waters. One of the water, and it's a medical grade appliance, it's used in overseas countries. It's, it's uh, a medically certified appliance in a couple of different countries, two or three different countries, not in Australia, unfortunately, but um, the, the, it does produce a hand sanitizer. Uh, it produces the water that we remove the vegetable, the chemicals from the vegetables. Mm. It provides um, different pH drinking water. Um, and we have filters underneath our kitchen bench and we have the filter in the appliance. So we're making sure that all the bacteria, everything's removed from our water, but the minerals aren't removed. And it also provides a toner for your skin. And we have like a shower appliance. And um, um, My showers keep reports. that clogged up. I live in a very hard water area and I have to keep replacing my showers every few years. 
Oh, goodness, you know, this is the same type of water that they have in the hot springs in Japan. Oh. It, it has a particular type of rocks or, in, or minerals in the shower appliance. I'm not so technically qualified that I can tell you what's exactly inside the, the appliance, but yeah. you attach it to your shower. And and the lady that's been using it, I was talking to her the other day, and I'm actually a distributor for both products, but she was saying that she doesn't use hair conditioner now since she's got the appliance that her hair is soft and she had little sores like on her scalp and now removing all that bacteria, C chlorine and all the bacteria out of her water, mm. um, of course your body's going to get healthy. It's, it's a no-brainer when you start removing all the chemicals out of your diet, out of your food, off your skin. Mm. The skin's the biggest organ in your body. Yeah. So it's very, very easy to understand why your body starts to get healthy. It makes so much sense because I am um, I do I used to make my own skincare creams. I still do on just on a smaller scale. But um I'd say to, I used to say to people, you know, when you're clean, like a lot of people would have greasy skin or dry skin, and a lot of it could be due with hormonal as well, but a lot can be how you're cleaning your skin. And for a lot of people, they're um, you know, they're using all these alcohol things to clean their skin and clean mm. all that grease off it. But the body is naturally, you have to have a certain amount of, you know, that to lubricate your skin right yes. the, la the elastic and all the rest so your skin is naturally making more of this sebum on your skin and that's why you, you're having it well it's part of why you're having greasy skin oh, some of it can be hormonal as well but if you over clean your skin so it's like you're saying with the shower if it's if it's very acidic or there's a lot of bacteria or whatever um it's going to dry out and and your body is going to be trying compensating for that and sometimes it can over so when you have the right balance and it's all back to balance like what you were saying like it, the body is just and like when when we're drinking the right water and eating the right foods it's we're providing that environment for our body to naturally heal because our body it's just so intelligent. Like it just wows me every time. And, and I'm continuously learning. I'm, I don't think I'll ever learn everything, but I'm continuously learning. I'm really curious as to how, because I'm just so fascinated by how uh, powerful and how the healing abilities that our bodies actually have. And look, we don't need to understand it totally, but we do need to have, you know, some respect for our bodies and, and have an understanding, you know, that's, so that we know what to give our bodies. And you were right. You were saying, we are all individuals as well that be your own doctor you mentioned because it's different exactly. for everybody and everybody would eat different some foods would agree with some people and some wouldn't like you were talking about the elimination diet you know like with dairy or gluten gluten is a big one at the moment and um, so, so many factors Kirsty. we're coming to the very end <laughs> would you I'll believe just that? Say very quickly before we finish that i was born in finland and my mum and dad made fermented foods and grew the garden and, you know, had what we call an organic garden today. Oh, and they made bone broth soup and they made soup, you know, all of these foods that they made. And I thought they were old fashioned. And it's funny, you know, I often laugh today when I'm talking to people about the need for doing all those things, you know, because mm -hmm. I grew up with that as a child from my parents when we migrated to Finland and all the other people in the multicultural community that we lived in. Yeah. We had all the different um, healing foods. And I often say to people, we need to go back to not a ketogenic diet, not 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 all those diets, but a healing diet. Yeah, back to basics. Because you know, so we've had all this information years ago. We've just forgotten it along the way, and we're yeah. just we're living in a busy world, and we're just looking for the the quickest and the fastest way to do things. And fast that's food. exactly right. That's what's happening. We and go to a pharmacy. We go to a pharmacy, and there might be a, a young person there. And we trust them to give us the chemical over the counter instead of looking at, you know, is our, are we drinking the right kind of water? Are we minimising chemicals? Are our bowel movements, which are critical, you know, to get the toxicity out of our body, making yeah. sure that there's a clean elevator that's letting everything out, you know, and, yeah. and taking the chemicals away, giving it the right nutrition and mindset, mindset thinking yeah. about the positive thoughts and yeah I, exactly i remember so, wayne dyer once said to me years ago when i met him I, I went to a lot of wayne dyer's workshops when he came to australia and he said you know he said kirsty just make sure we spent the weekend with him when he was in australia before he went back to maui and the whole weekend and and he said you know look at look you know when you drive a car you're looking forward yeah you know you're not looking back in the rear view mirror Love when it. you're planning your life 
you know, don't worry about what's back there and what's happened. Look at what you're going to do today. What can you do today to improve the quality of your life? What are the chemicals that you can remove out of your diet? Who, what are the programs you can register in? Who are the people, the like-minded people that you can connect with? And what is the kind of life that you want and work towards creating it? That it's, is gorgeous. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> And, and you know what, Kurt, the questions you're saying there, we really need to be asking ourselves those kind of questions, rather like solution based questions, rather than what if or if, if, if I'll wait till this and when this happens. They're the kind of things that some of us are saying and we're stuck and we're, we're, we're holding on to the past from we're saying. So language is really important. And what we're saying and asking, asking ourselves those questions, like what you said, and mindset is really pulling us forward and and solution based so important oh my god it's so incredible Kirsty. um oh my god i could stay here talking to you for another hour <laughs> i never knew that you actually grew up in finland wow yes yes wow. so i left finland uh, i speak the language fluently i left there when i was about five years old i migrated to australia but i didn't learn to speak english until i was about eight or nine and oh, um Wow. For various reasons. We lived in immigration camps and and things like that. But, um, yeah, going back to what we were talking about, if anybody wants any more information about the Mindset Program or about the water or about the diets that I was talking about, I'm more than happy for people to contact me. Yeah, and and, um, I'll get all your links for all those things and I'll put them in the show notes. So, Kirsty, where can people actually find you if they want to get in touch with you? Um. They, um, I've got a Facebook page, which yeah. I'll give you the link to, so they can message me, send a friend request. I'd mm-hmm. love for people to connect with me. I'd love yeah. to hear from people and, um, and send me a private message. Okay. And, um, and, and I can even give them then my phone number. Okay. So that's Kirsty Chapman, isn't it, on Facebook? Yes, it is. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes. And that's C-H-A-P-M-A-M, just for anyone who's listening. Brilliant, Kirsty. So listen, one last question. I want to um, ask you really just to sum it all up and if, if there's any like really last parting thoughts that you really want to leave people with to have them be empowered, what would that be? I, I really believe it's about the mindset. I think that when we start thinking about our future and our present moment and we let go of the past and, um, you know, once we start working on that, the other things seem to fall into place. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we've got a structured program that people, if they go into my Facebook page, they can actually click underneath my name. There's a link there Mm -hmm. where they can register free for a program and um, and they can contact me there. But mindset is so, so important. It is so important because what we think about is what we create. What we think about, and that is so scary, you know, it's, it's, um, it's scary in the sense if our thoughts are negative. But if our thoughts are positive, that is what we are attracting to us. It's yep. powerful. The law of attraction is yep. the law of creation. What I'm hearing there is I think sometimes we can be scared about how powerful we actually are. Like we really are powerful human beings. That's, that's what I can hear in your message and mindset. Oh, we are. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, beautiful. Absolutely. We are. <laughs> Kirsty, thank you so much for joining me today. I am absolutely, I'm so delighted we finally got you onto the podcast. And um, Kirsty, we're going to talk to you soon. Give me, send me all those uh, the details and links. We put them in the show notes. Definitely, anybody, if you're interested, do contact Kirsty. Reach out to her. Even just check out her page and what she's all about if you want more information. So, Kirsty, on that note, uh, have a great day and thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you kindly for inviting me. It's been excellent. Thank you. Bye bye.